This year's Business of the Year opened its doors in 2000. Business of the Year quickly became an attraction, drawing people to Oakdale from all over the metro. The Business of the Year continually invests in the community by investing in its facility. This Business of the Year definitely doesn't lounge around. It participates in numerous community events such as the Summerfest Parade, the Community Picnic, Spring Fling, and the Business so Showcase. This business of the year provides patrons with a warm, safe environment that protects them from zombies, villains, and giant creatures. This year's business of the year is just the ticket. It's the real deal. It does make concessions. And okay, there is lounging involved. So the envelope, please. The winner of this year's business of the year award goes to Marcus Oakdale Cinema. Congratulations. So David, please join me. Congratulations. Thanks. You want to see no. a few things? Yeah. Hi, I'm Paul. Hi, I'm Paul. Oh, very good. Congratulations. So Tim, your role is what's your role? District director. So uh, to support David and his crew, uh, Tim, uh, the district director came in and uh, wanted to help celebrate. Hi, everybody. Hi. So, this is awesome. Thank you very much. We Hold it. appreciate it. I almost forgot the hardware. <laughs> so what this says is that the Oakdale Area Chamber of Commerce proudly recognizes Marcus Oakdale Cinema as a 2019 Business of the Year recipient. Here Thank you. Go. you. You're welcome. Should we go over here with these guys? Yeah. Make sure everybody can, yeah. can be seen. All right. Yes? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Battle Mac, you didn't get it. Yeah. Come on. You're tough hand. You can do it. Sorry, Tim. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Hey, Thank you. Tell me your name. Matt. On behalf of the City of Oakdale and the Oakdale Area Chamber of Commerce, I want to thank you for joining us today. I'd also like to thank Michael Langdon Larson of Slumberland and the staff here at Forefront Campus for hosting us at this beautiful facility. I also want to acknowledge that the uh, Suburban Cable Commission is here filming with Lou Lee, the cable technician. So my name is Paul Renke, Mayor of Oakdale. And it's my honor and privilege to report on the state of the city to all of you gathered here today. Before I begin, though, I want to recognize and thank my fellow council, uh, city council members for their support and hard work this past year. As I mention your name, please stand up. Uh, Jake Ingebrigtsen. Yes. Susan Olson. Colleen Swedberg. and Kevin Zabel, who because of a work conflict, wasn't able to join us today. You know, I also want to thank and recognize Washington County Commissioner Stan Kowalski. Stan? <laughs> for your work in representing the city of Oakdale. Thank you. Lastly, I'd like to recognize individuals that serve on our city's advisory commissions and boards, some, of the, some who are in attendance today. As I state your name or your commission that you're involved in, please rise so we can acknowledge you. These are the women and men who volunteer their time in order to help the city continue to grow and improve. Our commissions include the Economic Development Commission, Steve Willock, Chair, the Environmental Management Commission, Keith Miller, Chair, Parks and Recs Commission, Janet Cunningham, Chair, Planning Commission, Dallas Pearson, Chair, and the Tree Board, Jane Klein chair. So thank you. You know, there's a note of special thanks to uh, Alyssa McLeod uh, did an amazing job putting this presentation together. So before any further, thank you. Now, let's get started with the recap of the past year and what it's going to look like going ahead. You know, my comments may prompt questions and there'll be time afterwards if you want to um, converse. 
The Oakdale community sure wouldn't be what it is without strong, capable, and passionate leadership, both at the council and administrative level. The last year has brought many, with it changes in leadership for the city, with three new council members being elected. Councilmember Jake Ingebrigtsen was sworn in on November 13, 2018. Council members Colleen Swedberg and Susan Olson were sworn in on January 8, 2019. I was sworn in for my second term as mayor on that date as well. So, trivia question. Which member of the city council has not previously served on a city advisory committee? So, yes, the answer is Susan Olson. So Susan, council member Susan Olson's first involvement with the city was successfully running for council in 2018. I had served on the Economic Development Commission from 1996 to 25, 2005. Council member Zabel served on the Planning Commission from 2015 to 2017. And then council member Ingebrigtsen served on the Planning Commission from 2016 to 2018. And then council member Swedberg served on the Parks and Recreation Commission from 2014 to 2018. Um, I, I really heard uh, Eric state that first, and so we do have prizes for winners of the trivia contest. There's a handful of <laughs> trivia questions. So if you choose uh, on your way out today, see Alyssa for your prize. <laughs> so the council, though, wasn't the only level of city leadership that experienced change and transition over the last year. Last month, Susie Warren, the city's finance and administrative services director, retired after 36 years of service. And last month, the city extended a warm welcome to its new administrative services director, Chelsea Peterson. You met her earlier, and Chelsea, if you would stand one more time, please. We are very, very fortunate. We are in very good hands with Chelsea. Um, I'd also like to recognize the other city leaders who continue to serve and steer our community in a positive direction. City Administrator Bart Fisher, Fire Chief Jeff Anderson, City Engineer and Public Works Director Brian Bachmeyer, Building Official Bill Schmidt, Community Development Director Bob Streeter, Police Chief Bill Sullivan, and Recreation Superintendent Julie Williams. The people, these people and the people in their departments do a phenomenal job for the residents and for ourselves, and it makes um, being involved with the city fun. So it's definitely appreciated. Thank you. <laughs> Talking about appreciated, you know, we're in a debt uh, of gratitude for prior leadership. There's a couple of people that um, were involved here, um, Mayor Kurowski, prior to ascending up to the commission level, then also Mayor Serac, and your guys' leadership and the councils that were with you did a really, really nice job to set the stage for this positive growth that we have right now. You know, in the last community survey, which was conducted in 2016, an amazing 98% of Oakdale citizens indicated they were satisfied with the quality of life living in Oakdale. Contributing factors that have been cited are a strong sense of community, affordable housing, and a great community upkeep. Oakdale is fortunate to have a robust Parks and Recreation Department that plans a wide variety of community events and activities that help contribute to the high quality of life for Oakdale residents. Attendance at popular community events like Summerfest, Winter Wonderland, Touch a Truck, and the Family Fun Inflatables continues to grow each year. Other recreational programming, events like the Mystery Egg Hunt and the Pumpkin Hunt consistently sell out every year. Second trivia question. Recently, the Oakdale Area Chamber of Commerce conducted their annual community picnic. How many hot dogs were served? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Tony. Close. A little bit high. Anybody else? Closer. Here we go. So the answer is 700. It was a phenomenal day if anybody of you were able to attend. Beautiful weather. Great, uh, great attendance and uh, just a ton of fun. You know, well-maintained infrastructure is also an important factor contributing to the quality of life. 2019 is going to go down in history as the year of street improvements in Oakdale. In addition to our city's annual student projects, street improvement projects, roughly about nine miles of improvement, several regional projects kicked off this construction season. 
These projects include the addition of the bridge at the Hadley and Highway 36 interchange, the widening of the bridge at the I-94, 494, 694 interchange, and also the construction of the pedestrian bridge on Radio Drive. Trivia. What's the type of detour called that's being used at the I-94, 494, 694 interchange? I had, no, I had never heard this before. So, so the answer is a Texas turnaround, also known as a Texas U-turn, a boomerang, or a loop around. A Texas turnaround is, is a lane allowing cars traveling on one side of a one-way frontage road to U-turn onto the opposite frontage road. Typically controlled by yield signs, these allow U-turning traffic to bypass two traffic lights, lights and also avoid crossing the local tra traffic twice. You know, Oakdale is proud to be a community that is welcoming and inviting for all of those who make it their home. As a public affirmation of its long-standing commitment to fair housing for all residents, the City Council adopted a fair housing pro policy on May 30th, 2019. This policy established formal practices that promote awareness and the commitment of the City to do its part in ensuring fair housing for current and prospective Oakdale residents. Also. Access to good schools and high quality education is, a vital, is vital to the future of our community and a large deciding factor as to where families will choose to call home. On May 14, 2019, the residents of School District 622 voted yes to support the district's request to fund school improvements across the district. These improvements will provide safe, up-to-date, and healthy learning environments for students and teachers. You know, we need an applause for that one. Because that's a huge deal. The city's, city of Oakdale's mission is to meet the evolving community-wide needs of our citizens through the delivery of top-notch municipal services in a fiscally responsible manner. Following are just a few highlights in the area of service and excellence over the last year. You know, when it comes to city services, street maintenance will likely rank at the top of the list in terms of importance to residents. Oakdale st street crews rose to the challenge presented this past weather, uh, winter with extreme cold temps and heavy snowfall. So imagine this, throughout the 2018-2019 winter season, street crews responded to 41 snow events, which resulted in 16,214 miles plowed and an amazing 76 and a half inches of snow removed from our streets. And almost 2,000 tons of salt was used to keep our streets safe. City Council and staff continuously strive for excellence as stewards of taxpayer money and as servants for the community. In 2019, the city received an award in financial excellence for the 28th year in a row. This came from the Government Finance Officers Association. The city's bonded debt also fell $1.9 million. That's a sign of uh, really um, what I mentioned before about Susie, Susie Warren's expertise in her way of working with the council and the department heads and the, uh, all the staff members to make sure our budgets are appropriate. So that's a cool fact. Uh, the city was pleased to offer city, ha city Hall as an early voting location during the last general election. Providing this service made it much more convenient for county residents to cast their vote. Trivia question. What was the date of the last general election? Close? November? 6, 2018. Whoever won that <laughs> Pick up your prize on the way out. So the answer is November 6, 2018. You know, the city also continues to work on establishing a strong visual identity. This initiative began in 2017 with a refresh of the city's brand and logo. The initiative continued in the past year with an updated look for the city's newsletter, Oakdale Update, new logos for the Acorn Award Program, and also the Oakdale Farmers Market. Oakdale's long-standing interest in environmental stewardship continued in the past year. Oakdale was once again de designated a Step 5 city in the Green Step Cities program. This Green Step St Cities program is a voluntary challenge and assistance program that encourages cities to implement environmental best practices. Step 5 is awarded each year as city reports and improves on designated sustainability metrics. Oakdale was one of only 12 cities in the whole state awarded the Step 
five designation this year. Furthermore, the city committed to using renewable energy in 2017. This was done through a community solar garden subscription and a significant portion of that subscription was brought online in the past year. Over the last eight months, the city has purchased 1.9 million kilowatt hours of electricity from the solar garden, which resulted in a cost reduction to the city from the prescription of $24,000. The lifetime value of this subs subscription is estimated to be at $2.5 million. So this was a phenomenal move done uh, back in 17 that's gonna pay off for many, many years. Several of the things, excuse me. Several of the things that makes Oakdale such a desirable community to live, work and recreate is in our strong business community, the variety of amenities and opportunities for our future. As we look back on the past year, we reflect on some of the new businesses that we have welcomed into the community. And as we look forward, we anticipate several development projects on the horizon. The city is very proud to maintain a close relationship with the Oakdale Area Chamber of Commerce to help build and support the business community. In the past year, the city and the chamber welcomed two new businesses with ribbon cutting ceremonies. Dart Escape, located at 3115 Hadley Avenue, is an indoor Nerf arena that opened in December 2018. We also welcomed Teriyaki Madness, an Asian fusion restaurant in the Oakdale Village Shopping Center. This store opened up March 2019. On the topic of new business, though, we'd be remiss not to talk about the building we are in right now. The previous Emation property was purchased by Slumberland in 2016. They completed their move to this location in November of last year, making Oakdale home of their official headquarters. Currently, 550,000 square feet at the Forefront Technology and Office Campus houses 17 businesses, and they have a daytime population of more than 400 workers. This includes the recently launched Incubology, which is the dedicated state-of-the-art lab space designed to support tech startups and companies searching for innovative and collaborative space. Also, of worth, also worthy of mentioning is the completion of the Twin City Hardware Headquarters expansion project. This project entailed the construction of a 54,000 square foot, two-story building addition. The city also joined with the school district and the other members other community members to celebrate the groundbreaking for Castle Elementary School as they prepared for renovations, including a building addition, entrance canopy, and parking facilities. Trivia. Speaking of new businesses and groundbreakings, on March 26th, the city of Oakdale approved plans for a new Taco Bell restaurant. They broke ground this week and are anticipating being open in October. Where will the new Taco Bell be built? <laughs> Very close. Bergen Plaza, in front of the old cub. So you guys duke it out on your prize on the way out. So the city of Oakdale is looking forward to a very exciting future. In August of 2018, the council adopted the 2040 Comprehensive Plan, an official statement that sets the vision for the future by establishing major goals and policies concerning the desirable physical, social, and economic development characteristics of the city. Also in the works is the Gold Line Bus Rapid Transit System. This is an 11 mile dedicated guideway that will run from downtown St. Paul through Oakdale and, and, and in Woodbury. Oakdale is home to two of the route stations at Helmo Avenue and Greenway Avenue. Over the past year, City Council reviewed and approved station area plans for both locations. The development surrounding the Helmo station will provide 700 to 900 new housing units and an estimated 30,000 square feet of commercial space and the potential for 100 new jobs in Oakdale. That gold line is expected to begin service in 2024. Lastly, progress is being made on the 3M Foundation development located just north of here. This is the 208 acre mixed residential development that will include approximately 360 for sale single family homes and townhomes, as well as over 900 rental multifamily units. The developer, Maplewood Development, is currently working on a sales agreement with Lennar, a national home builder, on the for sale product. So that brings us to a close on our 2019 State of the City address. 
I'm excited about all the things that we've accomplished in the past year and also very excited about the future and the wonderful things to come. I would like to thank you all and the people of Oakdale for allowing me the honor and the privilege to continue serving this great community as mayor. <laughs> as mayor. And with that, it's done. <laughs> so did any of that stuff, any questions? If I don't know the answers, we sure got people around that can, can get you the information or we'll follow up with you. Mr. Cove. Um, so the timing for the Hadley, uh, Hadley Highway 36 uh, bridge project, the contractor had two years to complete that. That is such a bugaboo, that is such a problem site not being able to get through. So the county, and Stan help me if I'm wrong here, so the county uh, initiated an incentive payment for that contractor that's significant that if he can get it done in one year in a passable state. I'm told that he is almost on schedule. This way that we've had lately is um, caused some delays, but I'm told he's almost on schedule for that accelerated one-year uh, construction. We'll see how it goes the rest of the fall. And Commissioner, I've lost track on uh, the Highway 94, 694, 494. I've always been under the uh, belief that it's been a two-year project. Is that accurate? Well, uh, I didn't get the exact end date on the interchange, but it's going to be significantly done uh, around, uh, it should be done around December because we're trying to be street light operate the uh, 694 in conjunction with uh, Highway 94. Uh, that's not only the exact date, it is a state very good. And then finally, I think the, the pedestrian bridge at Radio Bridge, or pedestrian walkway at Radio Bridge, Radio Drive Bridge, uh, I'm under the understanding that it's going to be the end of this year that will be ready for pass, passing and walking. Anything else? Any insight on the break The current thinking is that the negotiations are going to com be completed well, you know, so um, Maple Development and Lennar. Now that's just on the for sale product, the multifamily product, that uh, the apartments will be separated from that. And um, uh, by the time they get just the logistics done to get the plat filed and all the financing and, and final plans, that'll be next spring is the current thinking and when they'll start moving dirt. I can't tell you, you know, if it's going to go from north to south or east to west where that development is going to start. But um, we'll get more information about that when, if Lennar is successful finalizing their, their transaction. They will be just an amazing, amazing prop, property development. Uh, you know, for those of you who have been involved significantly, you know that each home is going to have either a sidewalk or a trail uh, adjacent to it with uh, very, very large amounts of um, green space, open space to, uh, to recreate in and just enjoy. So it's going to be a cool, cool development. It'll be take 10 years to finish it because it's so large, but um, it'll be neat and I'm anxious to, to see it get started next spring. Thank you very much.